Hey everyone, it's Steve Harris at Muse Themes. Thanks for stopping by. Let's take a look at the new Nevo slider. Now this widget or this slider actually has been around in the WordPress world for a long time. It's super, super popular uh, in that space because it's quite lightweight. It has really kind of beautiful transition effects. As you can see on screen here, the slider is scrolling through a set of images and each of the transitions between images is kind of this randomized effect. Um, it's definitely outside of anything that Muse can currently do right now and uh, we've actually been able to package up this widget uh, for Muse instead of the typical use which is generally WordPress. So it's a pretty slick widget and I'm excited to release it. It has a very large options panel on it so I'll run through all the options on it now but as you can see on the demo here on screen, it has, of course, forward and back buttons. And then we have some just kind of dot indicators on the left. And as you scroll through the images, right now I have it set to random. So most of the image transitions are different from one another. So let's have a look at how this is done in Muse. I'll go into my site here. I'm just using one of our templates called uh, Minimal. And I'll delete out the widget, which is just sitting right here. And so the first thing we're going to do is go to your library panel as usual, scroll down to number 29, which is the Nuvo slider, and drag it out on the page. Okay, and you see the options panel pops up here and there's lots of options on this. So I'll close that and let's get to styling this thing. So the first thing that we'll do, as always with any kind of slider or image gallery widget, is you need to add files for upload. You're going to add the files, the image files to your site. So let's click File, Add Files for Upload, and I have a couple images kind of pre-prepared here, just this image one, image two, and I set them at about 800 pixels wide, but you can really use any size. Muse is going to scale down the images that you're using. I just recommend that you keep them as small as you can because in our testing, when I use these, you know, two megabyte sized images in the widget, it does create some lag in the transition effects, which makes sense because you can't transition smoothly between two megabyte sized images. So let's go with image one, two, three, four, and five. And those are about 250 kilobytes a piece and let's click open. Okay, so now in the assets panel, you should see all of those images and they're going to be uploaded with the site. So then the next thing we'll do is let's select our slider here and let's look at the options panel. So if we go into the options panel, I've broken it up here into a couple different blocks. So the first area here, we have just some simple slider controls or setup controls. So we have slider name, which is used as always with all of our widgets to use multiple sliders on a page. So you could call this slider one, slider two, just make sure they're all different from one another. And another thing to note is don't put spaces in that name. We found that spaces can create some bugs. So the next setting we have is the transition effect. And as you can see right now, it's set to random by default. But if you click that drop down, you have a selection here of about eight different transition effects. The Nevo slider does actually come with more than eight. However, we did experience some browser incompatibility issues with some of the other ones. So we limited it just to kind of the best eight that worked really well across all the browsers. So if we wanted our slider to always slide in from the left or right or do this kind of box effect, we could specify one of those. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at random. I think that's really nice. The next thing we have is our animation speed and our slide display time. The animation speed will be the speed at which the animation transitions. So if you want a really slow slide or fade, we could set this to you know 2000. This is in milliseconds, so that would be two seconds. And then we have slide display time. So this is the amount of time the slide is going to be on screen before it transitions. Right now it's set to three seconds, so we'll just leave it like that. And we have the ability to start it on a random slide if you wanted to pick any of the images you've used. Uh, right now I'm just gonna leave it turned off so it will start at image one. Okay, so the next area is a little bit more for theming. So this slider comes with two themes. It says slider theme here, and we have standard and we have overlay. And I'll show you what these look like. I'm gonna skip this section for now, and I'm gonna jump down to where you actually enable your images. So the section at the bottom here allows you to enable or disable images up to eight different images. So if you wanted to turn off number four, you can see that when you click that checkbox, the ability to enter a file name in here disappears. So since we added five files for upload, let's enable five, and you just put in the image name right in these boxes. So in my assets panel, 
They were called image one, two, three, four, five. And of course, in the widget flyout panel, we also have image one, two, three, four, five. So I don't need to change those, but you would need to put in your own image names. So just with those basic setup options, we should be able to preview this widget in the browser. The one thing I'm going to make note of first is that this theme that we're going to preview is called the standard theme. So let's go ahead and preview it and let's see how it looks. Okay, so I've got the box set quite small here, but so the standard theme is the one that I kind of demoed. You've got the circular over or these little circle buttons here to indicate where you are in the slide. And then you have forward and back buttons. So they need to be styled a little bit better to, to fit within this site, but you can see what this kind of general theme looks like. And you may notice that the transition effects right now are really slow. That's because I changed the setting on those. Okay, so now let's go back into Muse and let's make some changes here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is scale this up a little bit bigger. So the slider is going to always fit the width that you specify here in Muse. So right now I've got this about 700 pixels or so wide, I believe, 795 pixels. So we'll leave it there for now. Okay, so when we open up the panel here in the styling kind of section in this part, we have a couple of options. We have show previous and next buttons. Now on the standard theme, those are going to be the forward and back arrows. If we go to the overlay theme, I'll show you how that looks. So I've just changed this slider theme to overlay and let's preview that again. So now with the overlay theme, we have kind of a black border around the outside, but if you mouse up over the slider, you get this kind of bar that appears and then you have previous and next buttons beside it. So we can select one of the circle indicators here on the bottom, or you could click previous and next to transition the image. So as you can see, these two different themes are quite different. So let's go back to Muse and let's look at style options. The first area here says styles for standard theme. The standard theme has a little bit less control in terms of styling options, but basically what you have is you have a previous and next hover color, which is going to be the color of your previous and next buttons when you mouse over them and then the background color, which is that thick kind of border you saw around the widget. Right now it's set to black, but if we set the border to white, and let's set the previous and next hover colors to black, and we'll take a look at how it looks. There, so now there's a nice white border on it, and when we hover over these controls, they hover black. Okay, so let's go back to Muse. I'm gonna change that transition effect to be a little faster. I find it a little bit slow right now at two seconds. Let's go back to one second. Okay, so the next area we have here is the styles for the overlay theme. The overlay theme has a little bit more control on how it looks. So the first thing we'll need to do is go to our overlay theme. And now once we do that, we can change these options. One thing I'm going to make note of, I find it easiest actually just to delete out any of the themes or the styles for the standard theme when you're working with the overlay theme, just to make sure you don't have any kind of overlapping styles going on. So what you can do now is change the previous and next button text. So right now it's just prev and next. We could say something like back and forward perhaps, okay. Now you can change the font name on those. It's set to Montserrat, but let's go with something like Open Sans. We'll drop the text size, or let's up it to say 13. Now we have the text color. Uh, right now it's set to white, which will probably work pretty well on that box overlay. And then we have the text hover color. So right now it's set to our kind of Muse themes orange, but for example purposes, let's change this to blue there. Okay, so now that we've styled this up a little bit, let's just preview it in the browser and see how it looks. Okay, so we have our image here and when we mouse over it, we get a back and a forward button that appear. We have a blue kind of mouse over style and the text is in the Open Sans size or the Open Sans font. So it looks like all of our style controls have worked quite nicely. And as you can see, the images are still transitioning nice and smooth. So we could add a background color to that style as well, up here where it says styles and standard theme. It still does take a style applied. So if we added a white background color to this widget, let's preview it in the browser again. There, so you can see that we do have kind of this white boxed board around it. And of course, our controls still work nicely when we mouse over. 
So that's about it for style controls on this widget. It's uh, it's a pretty big and powerful widget. However, I would consider it somewhat experimental in the sense that it really wasn't made for Muse and we've adapted it to Muse. So this widget will be under development for a while and we'll keep tweaking and improving it based on the feedback we get from you guys after using it for a while. So as always, send us a note if you have any questions or run into any issues and we will definitely do our best to keep bug fixing this until it is absolutely perfect. Enjoy and thanks again.